going. Yes. Could you um, begin, please, by giving us details of your your full name and where and birth and where and when you were born? Yes, my name is Louis Sassini, Louis Sidney Sassini. I was born in Forest Gate in 1903. And the names of your... And that'll leave you to work out my age. I can provide you with a pencil and paper or, or a, a calculating machine if you okay. want it. Okay. Um, the names of your parents and your mother's maiden name? My mother's name was Valentine, Adelaide Valentine. Yes, and your father's? He was David Sassini. The name Sassini, does it go back in that spelling as long as you're aware? Yes, but there are some variations of it. There are some with S-A-double-S instead of S-A-S as I use it. And some which end in I-E and others which end in E only. Uh, there are a number of branches, I'm afraid none of whom I'm in touch with, or not many of whom I'm in touch with. And where did the family originate from, as far as you know? I don't know where it originated, but it came through. It came through Holland. My mother's family, as far as I know, came through Spain and Holland. So they were both so, both sides of Sephardi. Is that right? No, my, and my mother was, but not my father. So, tell me a bit about your father. What was his profession? He was um, a proofreader. One of the large uh, London printing houses, Waterloo's, I believe it was. Was that un um, unusual for a Jewish person in those days, do you know? I don't know. I don't know, Larry, I suppose it was. And did he, was that a good job or poorly paid? Oh, or it was a, no, I was trying to say it was. But nowadays, of course, it would have been the equivalent job nowadays, but I suppose would be. Uh, Low middle average, I suppose, from a salary point of view. Hmm. So, um, what? Right. Um, do you have brothers and sisters? No, I'm the only one. Any, so, how well off would you say your your childhood was? Or? Oh, not well off. Not by any means well off. That ties up because of what you said about your father's mm -hmm. earnings. So, um, your your mother did she do anything other than keep the house? <coughs> Not that I remember. No, I think not. No. So, what sort of house was it? A terrace? Well, I don't know what we, what the house was where I was born in because we left that very early when I was very early. But we lived in in the East End. We lived in. Uh, oh no, I know. Remember going back to is it Trafalgar Square. Hmm? A street or building was that? No, no. It was a house. It was a in fact, there were very large houses in there. It, it was at one time a very uh, dignified sort of square, but it degenerated like most of these places do. And uh, when we lived there, I think there were, apart from my own family, there was one other family lived in the same house. In other words, the house was used by two families. We had the, I've forgotten now, the ground floor and the first floor. And the other family. I, I've forgotten what it was. You know, the house was divided between the two right. families. So the, the house itself was called Trafalgar Square? No, that was the, 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 uh, the street. It was a square. It yeah. was a square with uh, gardens in the middle and railings around it. Mm. An old-fashioned, um, dignified Victorian square, I should imagine. Mm. So let me go back to your, your parents. Um, were they, do you know what, they, what synagogue they were members of? Mm. Well, my grandfather, <coughs> my mother's father, that was, <coughs> was... Um, a member of the um, Jim Beavis Marks. Not, yes. Leading in synagogue there. Right. And your, your father, did he not um, belong particularly then? I think, no. I, and as I mentioned on the telephone to you, my religious uh, yeah. uh, activities Religion. were minimal. Mm. Right. So, in fact, what your parent, as a boy. I, and I used to go with my grandfather to. Uh, Famous marks, and then I think sometimes to uh, what's the name of that shawl now? Did you Stepney Green, Stepney Green shawl was it? Or was that the smaller one? Was it Federation? No, or not Federation, no. United, United, United one, yes. You didn't know that? No, I think that was that was the United shawl. 
But your, and your parents, so it was your grandfather who took you, and your parents didn't really observe well, anything much? Mm, mm, uh, yes. Mm. I wouldn't say they didn't observe anything. They used to keep Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, like so many Jews do. Mm. And I... My religious education was... Uh, well I, used, I used to go to a... I went to religious classes for... I have no idea how long, but only because I was my grandfather's grandson. I remember once they gave me a prize for attendance because they couldn't find anything else to give me a prize for. <laughs> so you went to, yes, that was, you went to Haida, but only, but not for um, not very long. Uh, and, right, so not, so I gather from that, was much else observed like Kashut or anything else? In no, I, no, I don't think so. I think my grandmother used to keep Shabbat. She, in fact, she did. She was, uh, She kept about my cash out. Yes, I think she did, yes. And I remember she, she had a very lovely saying, I remember. In, um, when she heard Dayelu being sung, she always put in uh, various things and for what, for, for some things, um, Dayelu. And when it came to the other verse, if the Lord had not given us the Sabbath, and she would say, don't say that. <laughs> she loved her Sabbath. <laughs> <She, laughs> and where did, they, did your grandparents live near you? They lived quite near us. Yes, they lived in Morgan Street, which mm -hmm. was a turning more or less leading into the square. Morgan? Mo Morgan. Mo Morgan. Mo Morgan Street, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, it was a, it's a typical East End area. Mm -hmm. Now I should imagine it's a dismal slum. But then it was quite a respectable place. And, uh, so these were your your father's um, parents, and what did I you don't. I never knew my father's parents. Oh, sorry. Those were your those were your mother's parents. Yes. <coughs> I never yes. knew my father's parents at all. They died before you were born. Yes. Um, and so your <coughs> your grandparents that you spoke of. Your grandfather. What did he have, have a, a trade or? Was yes. Done? What did he do? He was at one time the editor of the Jewish World. Yeah. Do you remember the Jewish World? That was. Uh, yeah, a f weekly paper. Yes, it was the uh, the uh, companion journal to the Jewish Chronicle. Mm. Well, I, I believe that folded up many, many years mm. ago. But he was, I believe, the editor. I don't know if that was his main job or what he did, but uh, he, he was yes. at one time the editor of the Jewish Chronicle. That seems to imply a considerable Jewish uh, oh, yes. affiliation. Yes, he was, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And going a bit further, that point, during the war, the first war, uh, we moved down, we lived at Surbiton, and I can't quite remember the sequence of events, but my grandmother died, and my grandfather came to live with, with us down in Surbiton. What did they both come from? I really can't remember that. But uh, we lived in Surbiton, and he, I know at least, possibly both of them lived with us for quite a long time. And he died while we were over there. Mm -hmm. so that, during the First World War. So. You must go by so quickly. Yeah, I, I, think it, I think it was during the First World War. Yes. What was your grandfather's first name? So, uh, uh, he was known as Saul. His name was Saul Henricus, S. H. Valentine. He was Quite well known, I believe, in the congregations. Mm. So Henry is so the one at time. Oh, so yeah. Um, so yes, Henry is the surname. No, the Paul, middle name. Saul Henry. Saul Henry were his two Christian names. His first names, yes. And yeah. Valentine. Valentine was right. his uh, yes. surname. Is there any connection with the publishing firm on that family? Do you know Valentine Mitchell? Not so far as I know. No. I, well, I really don't know because no. that, that was in my very early life, and I didn't take those sort of things in. Yeah. So your grandfather, well, and your grandmother were both an influence on your early life? You yes, it? yes, I would say so. Yes. Anything else since you told me an anecdote about your grandmother? Was she really of the old type? Did she wear a shaitl, a wig? She didn't wear a shaitl, but I don't know. But uh, like most old ladies of 40, they they were old ladies at 40. So she gave you the impression of being old? Yes. Yes. 
Was any Yiddish spoken no. or other no. foreign language no. that you know? No. So they were anglicised? Absolutely, yes. Were they born in this country? You know? no. I think they both were. He was a Valentine and she was uh, Van Rolt. Van Rolt? That was... R-A-L-T. R-A-L-T. Van, Van Rolt. That was a typical Dutch name. Mm-hmm. Typical Dutch family. <laughs> <family. coughs> so as a as an editor, he must have had in fact a very good command of the English. Oh yes, he spoke perfect English. English, yes. And you don't know, yes, what else he... whether he had other journalists? No, I don't know. When we were in Surbiton, he, together with Max Wiseman, I don't know whether you know of him, he, yeah. those two started the Surbiton and Kingston congregation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was that must have been in must have been during the first war. First war. First war. Yes, war. Your grandfather was one of the founders. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Max Wiseman started the congregation there. Yeah. Really. And. Uh, <coughs> So, did, so that was your, what you know of your grandparents. Yes. Um, Mr. Sassini has just um, shown the, um, a silver teapot with the inscription um, presented to Mr. and Mrs. S. H. Valentine on the occasion of their golden wedding as a mark of esteem and affection by the Surbiton and Kingston Jewish Congregation, 24th June 1918, 5678. And another silver salver, presented by the committee of the Old Ford and North Bow, Hebrew and religious classes, to Mr. and Mrs. S. H. Valentine on the occasion of their golden wedding, 24th June 1918. Hmm. Thank you. Of course, anyway. Yes. Let's go to your own upbringing, then, if that is really, um, yes, what you know about your uh, ancestors. Or theirs. Um, mm. Yes. So what, where did you go to school? I went to an elementary school in Bow, mm-hmm. and I had, unfortunately, no education. It was what, a very poor school? Well, it was an ordinary elementary school, the old-fashioned type of elementary school, mm. and uh, all my real education came after I left school. What I left, uh, I'll let, let's see how that happened. What ages were you at school? I left school at 14 uh, because. Uh, 1917. 1917, that was during the First War. Yes. Uh, that was, in fact, when we moved to Surbiton because of the war. Because of bombing? We yes. Bombing? Yes. <laughs> the Zeppelin raids were occurring then. Oh. Of course, you won't remember that, will you? So I remember one or two, have one or two very vivid memories of the Zeppelin raids. I saw mm-hmm. one Zeppelin being brought down in flames in Cuffley. Uh, and as I say, that rather put paid to our, anything in my further education. Because I left school at 14, because I just happened to be 14 at that time. Then mm-hmm. I went to evening classes at Kingston, and uh, then on I went to other further education in uh, the Northampton Polytechnic, which is now a city university. Mm. Uh, which ta- what sort of um, direction was this? What did you learning? Basically? No, at that time I was I hadn't any direction. And then uh, Max Wiseman, it was because of Max Wiseman that I became an optician. In fact, right. he had a, a very substantial wholesale optical wholesale business. Uh, he came over here from Germany. I couldn't give you a come to him. But anyway, he started a business which became a very well known, uh, in fact, I think, more well, universally well known, uh, optical wholesalers. M. Wise and Co. Limited was a very famous company. It's now been amalgamated into other big companies, like most things do, most things are going to now. Um, he introduced me to another firm and I started in an optical manufacturing company, Alfred Mills, uh, where I learnt all the 
basics of optics. At the same time, I went to evening classes and qualified as an ophthalmic optician uh, from, the, from, the, from the Northampton Polytechnic. And from there, I went to um, London Refraction Hospital as a student. And I was ended up there in the senior, as a senior staff refractionist at London Refraction Hospital. And I was on the staff there for 50 years. Really? So it's uh, 50 years? Yes. Really. I had a. Um, I can't take that down. But if you'd like to come inside, I can show you a little, another little memento thing. Uh, I'm right. fine. All right, come well, down if you like. Well, perhaps I'll. Oh, yes, if it's if this. So I have here a medal. Um, the, the Ernest Aves Medal. The Ernest Aves Medal presented to Mr. Sassini, FBOA, FSMC, DCLP, P, D, Auth for work of outstanding merit in ophthalmic optics and that was presented in 1972 by the London Refraction Hospital. Right. Um, I'm just, I'm just, right, I'm just just stand there. Um, right, that's the same. Yes, that's that's presented at the uh, cafe, at uh, the cafe royal, was it? Right, well, so that was your professional, right, uh, it's it's a 50 years uh, at the hospital. 50 years service, you were given yes. that testimonial. Yes. So that was your professional work, which you yes. evidently found satisfying. And yes. Uh, and you published various papers, did you, from that? Uh, yes, medal? and I've written one or two books as well. Really? Hmm. Well, um, let me come back to your, your personal life. When did you when did you meet your, your wife? What sort of age? Or oh, when, and no, how? We were married in 1941. Mm -hmm. How? We just had our 47th anniversary. Yeah. What was your, how, how, how did you meet? Was the social or other connection? I think, was it, uh, yes. okay. Mutual friends? My, my cousin, Al Sassini, married his sister, Celia, hmm. and I met her at their house. Hmm. And I took her to the pictures and bought a box of chocolates and this is the result. Okay. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so were you still living, um, living, how long did you live then, with your parents? Uh, no, then I was living in Harrow. Am I in Harrow then? Yes, I was living in Harrow with my parents. I don't know, when did you come back from Surbiton? No, we came back from Surbiton and lived in uh, Dolly's Hill. Then, then we lived in Harrow, Kenton during which time I met my, my present wife. Yeah. Oh, my present wife, because there wasn't any other, but I yes. <laughs> And uh, you, when you got married, you set up your own home, did you? Yes, well, uh, the, house, no, the house in Kenton was mine. I bought the house, and my parents lived with me. In fact, we lived together as a family. I wouldn't say they lived with me. Yeah. They lived there as a family. Mm -hmm. And uh, I bought the house, I suppose, because my father may not have been, I don't really know the reason, but I suppose my father wasn't in the position to or didn't want to buy a house. And I, being a sort of up and coming youngster, I said, all right, if you don't want it, I'll do it. Right, yes. This is a normal sort of thing, I suppose. Right. And, and then uh, when we got married, my parents moved to a flat in Dollis Hill, mm -hmm. and we lived in the house. Right. And we were married in synagogue? Yes, Edgware. Edgware before? No, Edgware. Edgware. Orthodox. Yes, the Orthodox. United. Yes, you followed your <coughs> Orthodox tradition at that point. Um, you indicated that were you much involved then in um, synagogue affairs of that Really, time not at all. Yeah. No, not at all. So, um, when did you move? Uh, so, you, so you were, um, you took, sorry. Um, you, you stayed in Harrow and then you moved to... We lived in Kent for many years, then we came to here. Right, which you said was 13 years ago, was it? Uh, yes. What? 59, was it? Yeah, right. One of the things we're looking at is why people have moved to this area. Is there any particular reason you moved to Northwood? Well, we lived in a place in Kenton, which was opposite Northwick Park Station. And that began to get very tiresome because the cars parked outside the station, right outside our door. And we decided that uh, we didn't like that very much. 
and we just looked around all over the place. We looked in central London, we looked all over uh, the large flats in Edgware Road, we looked at uh, news houses, we looked everywhere and we came out here and had a look at this and we saw this being built and this was it. Uh, not much of a story about that, yeah. but that's it. Right, okay. Um, you have children? No. No. Um, and when did you join Northwood and Pinner congregation? When we came down here, we did it. No, we were in, we, when we were in Harrow, we belonged to Wembley Shore. To the Wembley Liberal. Liberal. Wembley Liberal. How did you, are they disappointed? Any, well, how did you come to change from Orthodox to Liberal? Oh, no. I can't tell you, I don't know. Okay. <coughs> found the Liberal more attractive. Yes, I really can't tell you the reason of that. <coughs> so and then, then when we came down here, we continued our membership at Wembley for quite a long time. And then uh, after some time, we just transferred to here, that's all. Okay, that's at that time, the short here was in uh, Hallowell Road. Yes. Right. Um, have you, uh, Mr. Sessin, have you had other, um, let's say, hobbies, uh, social, political, cultural interests? You've had in your life? Hobbies, I did a bit of painting, as you saw some of all those old paintings. In fact, all these are mine. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> and then I did some sculpture. That's a wood carving of mine over there. Mm -hmm. A little China one. Yes. And um, a bit of sculpture, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. All very amateurish and uh, purely for my own amusement. I never sold anything, and they were offered anything for sale. <coughs> did you go to local um, did you go Yes, to I went to I went to the adult education class to start with, and then I did a few things these things on my own. All right. Um, so, oh, were you? I should just go back to the um, your childhood on the religious side. Were you bar mitzvah in the yes uh, in which synagogue? Oh dear. Did you, was it the big one, the Duke's place, or no, the smaller one? I think it must have been the Stepney Green. Yeah. Yeah. Stepney Green. Right. I, I think it must have been. I can't really remember that. Yeah. So but I think, yes, you can take it that it was. It must have been there. Yeah. Was much made of it then? Or your oh, I had a usual party, yes. I remember I dropped a tray of glasses. <laughs> what did they do? Hire a hall or you mm. had it in your home? Mm. Uh, I had it in my home. Yeah. And I remember, um, <laughs> it's curious how these little instants come back, isn't it? Yes. Um, either we had borrowed or somebody had brought a whole lot of glasses for this party. Mm. And I was treating this tray of glasses for one room to the other, and the oh. doorbell rang. I dropped the whole damn lot. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, something else. And you s oh, oh, so the first, the effect of the two wars on you. What can you say? Anything? The first World War, when that broke out, you were only. Um, I was too young then. I was too old for the second one. Well, no, I won't say I was too old. When that started, it was 1939, wasn't it? Yes. And I must have been 36. Mm -hmm. So I was too old at the beginning of that war because it didn't take. Mm -hmm. And then. My job then was a reserved occupation because I was involved with the supplying spectacles to the army, the army, army optical, army optical depot at Nottingham. So, uh, so you didn't serve. I didn't serve. Uh, no, all I did was a uh, air aid warden's job. You know, that's all. Yes. Yes, I say. And um, anti-Semitism. You say have you? Maybe you didn't um, stand out, perhaps. Do you, have you met any anti-Semitism? No, I don't think so. No, I haven't had any, any kind of other memories. Right. <coughs> any other notable memories of any historic events or anything else in your lifetime you think were like to mention? Uh, I don't think so. I got married. Yeah. I suppose that's worth mentioning. I think we <laughs> did mention you. Well, what's your department? You were married, yes, you said it at Edgeware. Yes. Um, honeymoon, nothing else, but. Yes, we were at Honeymoon during the war. We went to Gloucester, um, not Gloucester, mm -hmm. uh, Worcester, uh, what was the name of the place? Mm -hmm. Yes, we went to uh, a lovely little country place, really. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so that was during the war, so there was very little uh, mm -hmm. festivity. Evesham, that's right. Mm -hmm. Very little festivity about it. Mm. Right. The, just a word of further, just your professional side. I am um, as a re refractionist. You're yes. seeing, you were seeing patients, or yes. with making them and make getting their. No. Lens. Well, uh, I was an optician. I found the optician, or an optometrist, as they're known now. Uh, I examined the eyes, prescribed glasses, and uh, 
dealt with things like that, squint and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did that, I had a room at home at Harrow, I did something in there, particularly part time, because I was then working with Newbolts. And um, after that, I continued working with Newbolts and I had a, a room fixed up in the factory in my office, in the factory where I did the employees and the staff there, they did a lot of their eyes. And then in 19, how many was it? Uh, must have been 61, I suppose, was it? That company was taken over by one of the large finance houses, as is what they want. Uh, my department, which was the technical and instrument department, was no longer thought to be of any use to the financiers, so I became redundant. I was then, what, 58, was I? Mm -hmm. you this is what, 1961, yes. you said? Yes, yes. so that's right. Uh, and I, we, we lived here then, and then I started a practice in Harefield, uh, which succeeded. And after five or six years, I sold that practice and retired. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. I was 65. That practice is still running. It now belongs to um, Donald and Richardson. Oh, yes. Actually, so the, hospi the, um, the hospital practice was part-time? The hospital was right. purely part-time, voluntary part-time. Right, what was that, a day, or two, a day a week or something? Mm, afternoon and evenings. Mm. I think right. one afternoon a weekend, several evenings. Right, I see. So perhaps you saw the more difficult cases there, I suppose. Wasn't it? Yes, cases were referred to us by by opticians, and of course there was passing public admitted as well. <coughs> and so I, I started there as a student, and I got onto the staff, and I finished up as a senior staff refractionist mm. mm. for many years. Right. Just finally, as you were sort on the telephone and. NPLS, um, your involvement with that congregation you have? Is really our minimal. <laughs> All right. Right, well, uh, I have just. Yes, yeah, fair enough, isn't it? I don't, don't do anything really in the end. You, did, you didn't, uh, since you joined Norway in fact, not in Wembley? Or? No, no. Um, a formal question which I put that um, presumably you agree that the copyright in this interview is uh, with the NPLS or the history group and that uh, the material can be used for historical research uh, as uh, uh, found useful? Yes, if it is of any value, well I can't yes. imagine it might be. Yeah. Something in your ancestry. There's nothing here which uh, I think... Uh, nothing I'm ashamed of, that's what you think. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes. So, uh, Mrs. Um, Sassini, could you mm -hmm. begin by telling me your um, full name at you birth? Sophia. Sophia, and it was that Valentine. Yes, Sassini. I'm Karen. At, at birth. Name. Yes, so your maiden name. Name mm -hmm. at birth. Karen. C O G N. Oh, your right. Your maiden name was Karen. Mm -hmm. And where and when were you born? <laughs> yes. Where, where, uh, where and when were you born? I was born in Clapton. And I was born on the 22nd of May, 1913. And um, your what did your father do? Well, he didn't really have a very big, very successful life at all. He tried, but... What sort of thing, though, did he... He must have had some... Uh, well, he, he was travelling at one time, commercial traveller. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I that's what I remember. I mean, because it was weekend, we saw him. Mm. So was that... Did you have brothers and sisters? One of each. Where were you in the, in the middle? So was it rather di Did your mother have a difficult time bringing you up? 
well, not difficult to in bring this up, so that just we had uh, her father lived with us, and I'm afraid he was one of the interfering kind of things. So there was always a bit of tension around. <coughs> So, um, right, tell me, uh, so anything more, home, I should ask, religious affiliation of your parents? Were they members? Did they they were members of the shul, but um, didn't go uh, to no, Which yeah. shul was that? That was um, Dimension Road, Hatton. Um, so you, did you have yes. much? Mm -hmm. Observance in the home? Did you? Was oh yes, to? we had a kosher house. You kept yes. kashrut, separate, yes. milk and meat, and, mm. but um, and Shabbat candles, kiddush. Mm, no. Oh, no you, you, your father often wasn't home at um, yeah, right. Shabbat. So that was just Friday night. It was Friday night. You say it was not really mm. observed, and you didn't go to shul much. No, or I didn't. Just what you went just with holy days. And, Yes, and uh, some in some point because my grandfather and his lose were also a Spanish and Portuguese being as marked member. So what sometimes you were taken there away? Oh, yes. Well my grand was came into it. But your grandfather so I was involved in He yes, he was quite well known in his own circle. In that um, synagogue. Mm -hmm. um, so, right, your, did, did you have a, you, I suppose, did you have a Seder's at home? Yes. Your, your father, was he, did you have a And um, so, your, which of your, grand, your four grandparents did you know all of them? Mm -hmm. My mother's mother died before she went to marry. Um, I can't recall. I must, must have been quite young when both my father's parents died. So the so. grandfather, so it was your mother's father who was, you say, living with you? Mm -hmm. And your mother's mother, did you? No, she died before they were she, married. She died in, so it was only the one. Only the one. Again, yeah. So he again, uh, I gather he was something of an influence on you? Well, he was on everybody, I think. <laughs> yes. What was his first name? What was it? Yes. Samuel da Costa. Right, Samuel da Costa. Mm -hmm. And so that is a, a well-known um, Gomez da Costa. Family. And where did he originate from? Or how, how long have they been in England, do you know? I I think they must have been born in England because I never heard of any relatives overseas at any time. So you don't know of him coming from, of a family, no. from, a family from Spain or you don't? Um, I think no. my mother's, my father's mother came from Holland. Or, where was she? I, bet, I don't know because I hardly knew her. So um, it was Cohen and, yes, de Costa. Um, mm -hmm. the Co your father's so your father's father was obviously was Co was a Cohen again, yeah. but you, which is a common enough name. Do you know how far back or, or where he came from? No. Um, so your but and language it was so um, Yiddish spoken at all. Um, so you went to school where? In Clapton. Um, just an ordinary state school. Did you get any religious education, Vader? Yeah. Was that was not a, was that not unusual amongst the girls? Or? Well, it wasn't pursued. Put it that way. It wasn't pursued in your in your case. Mm. So you went to school. Anything? And what was it? A good school or average? Or how good an education did you get? Yes, I think I got a good ground. And what age that was? You go to the, that was a primary school you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Went through to each step to uh, what used to be known as central school. Right, in all of the 
a little bit below her scholarship. Born in the same building, was it? Sorry. Same as well, yes. And what age did you leave school then? I was 16. Did you, did you get a matriculation or something? No, no, so something. No? So what did you do then? I became a shorthand typist. So this was when? This was 1913 and 16. Um, that's 1913. Um, 29 or 30. Yeah. Right. And your, um, you were, of course, so you had the two younger, um, well, you had a brother and sister, wasn't brother, you? Brother, younger, 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 sister, sister and um, Right, and you continued, you lived at, at home. Yes. And uh, what, what sort of jobs did you get as a typist? Were they at all good jobs? Yes, they were in there. They could be that way. I was in the solicitor's office and I took a temporary job there when I first went to school. And uh, then I got a job with Romeo in the office equipment. And I was there for oh, 11 years, I think, until I got married. Um, and I gather you were, were, were you at all involved at all in religiously or Jewish organisations or synagogues at all? Were you Zionist or? No. You kept your Bibles, I think, because you were brought up without much mm. Jewish connection. So, in fact, when you got married in, was in the synagogue, as I just heard mm -hmm. from your husband, that was, in, was a return to the uh, synagogue. Um, and after you were married then, did you continue work? I did, yes. As a guest, so what, secretary? Still secretary. And you're involved, so you obviously have the same uh, then affiliation to the, um, to Wembley Synagogue and to NPLS. And uh, did you do anything at all actively in the um, and other interests of um, hobbies or social or political or cultural interests? No, I can't think of any. <laughs> Just a housewife. <laughs> yes. Um, right. And anti Semitism, did you meet at all? Yeah. No, not at school, not really. Where you were at school, were there are many other Jewish children in your school? Not, not in that my school. There was another school, um, Sigden Road, no doubt. It was more Jewish children, I think, than other. But there were a few in, in my school, but not in. But although you were only a few, you were presumably known to be Jewish, oh, yes. and you weren't um, single. Oh, no, out. no. Was it a mixed at your school? Was it mixed boys and girls? At the beginning, yes. Yeah. In the last couple of years, it was separated. Um, right. So any, anything? Else, I think, from my point of view, yes. Your, your family, your yes, your grandfather. Anything else about your? Earlier about your family or any notable uncles or aunts. You mentioned an mm. uncle where you met your husband. Was anything, any other notable members of your family or interesting from a Jewish point of view? I don't think so. Right. Well, thank you. Um, I might just go, um, again, can I just go the first The last um, five or six years. Yes, you see how just a it's made life difficult for both of you. Yes. Yes. Yes, but obviously I'm aware of it something. Um, I just put you heard the formal question which I put to you.
uh, her husband that um, copywriting this uh, to the oral history project, and yeah. she would be there's nothing here that she would want withheld. I don't think anybody wants to read it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let me just go back to your, I think this will hear, to yes. your school, um, Mr. Sassini. Um, I didn't ask again, was that a mixed school of boys yes. and girls? Yes. It was mixed. And um, were there many other Jewish children? So far as I remember, very few. Now this was a few, but not many. You were in, um, in school then in Cla uh, This was in the East. This was in the East End in Perth. It? But it was um, well outside the main area of Jewish settlement then, was it? Mm. Yes, there was, there was uh, some Jewish uh, population in Stepney Green, which was more or less adjoining Burrow, but uh, it wasn't a particularly noteworthy Jewish area, I think. Well, it's an East End area, not particularly Jewish. Mm. So you... The school I went to was... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, yes, Malmesbury Road Elementary School. Malmesbury Road Elementary Road. Then School. Then went, and from there, when I was 11 or 12, I went on to Bowes Central School. I left at 14, right, but having achieved nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, just interested, so um, relatively few Jews, but you, and you didn't meet uh, anti-Semitism no, again? No, not that No, it was a mixed, uh, sorry, did you say that it was a mixed um, boys yes, and girls? Yes. Both of them? Uh -huh. Right, okay, that just completes that. And were the you, Jewish assemblies and or excused from religious doing? Yes, I remember to attend uh, the daily prayers. So you excused yourself, you were yes. about to be excused from that. Was that the same with you, Mrs. Sassini? Yes. Did you? You did, so that did. So you did have, so it was again, it was your grandparents' uh, influence was the stronger yes, of the yes. religious influences, yes. Right.